this is to, instead of touching on your phone, is to use the foil method. You could definitely use the box method, um, which is not a problem. But since there's a little bit extra work a lot of times with radicals, I prefer to um, use the foil method. So remember, the FOIL method is basically first, outer, inner, last. So you got to remember FOIL, which each and every one term, rep or which they represent. So first is going to be the first term in each binomial. And simply, we're going to be multiplying these first terms. A lot of times, we just you know, sh show that by like connecting them. So we just multiply 1 times 2. I would recommend always showing the multiplication, even if it's something easy. Um, it's, very e it's very nice to be able to check your answers or check your work if you just show your work saying, oh yeah, I multiplied 1 times 2. OK, good. Then, Julian, the next thing we do is going to be the outer. So the outer is going to be the outside two terms. So that's going to be 1 times negative square root of 5, which is negative square root of 5. Then we do the inner, which is the inner two terms. Does anybody have any questions on the FOIL, how I'm deciding F-O-I-L? Hopefully it remembers that. Um, so that one is negative square root of 5 times 2. Again, you remember, you cannot multiply a number outside a radical inside a radical. So that r remains negative 2 square root of 5. Ooh. And then the last one, or is last, is going to be the last terms in each binomial. So that's going to be negative square root of 5 times negative square root of 5. Negative square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 is equal to negative square root, or actually that's going to be positive, right? Negative times negative, positive 25, which equals 5. So remember, uh, the last thing now is now we just need to combine everything. So basically what I have here is 2 minus the square root of 5 minus 2 square root of 5 plus 5. And if you guys remember, when I was teaching about adding and subtracting radicals, you can only add and subtract radicals when the index, meaning it's a square root, a cube root, a fourth root, the index is exactly the same, as well as the radicand is exactly the same. So do you guys believe me that the index is the same? They're both square roots? Yep. And the radicand's the same, right? They're both the number 5. So if you want to think about this, think about them like they were variables. How would I do this? What is negative x minus 2x? What do you do? Do you actually subtract the x's, or do you subtract the numbers in front? You subtract the numbers in front, right? So what's negative 1 minus 2? If you owe me a dollar and you borrow two more dollars, how much do you owe me or do you have? You owe me $3, right? So this would be 2 minus 3x plus 5. You can combine the 2 and the 5, so it's 7 minus 3x. That's it with variables. Guess what? The math is exactly the same. It's just instead of a x, we're using square root of 5. So your final answer is going to be 7 minus 3 square root of 5. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions? Yes, Frank. No, no questions. Yes, John. They didn't. I was just using this as a random example to just remind you how to add them. This has really nothing to do with the problem. It's just I'm just trying to connect it to something you're familiar with, something you know. But actually doesn't is not a part of the problem at all. That's why I put it in a box. It's not really a part of the problem. I was just trying to remind you of like adding with those. Okay. I guess we're done with that one. Would anybody like me to go over any other one before we get into